Recently, Mike V posted this really interesting sequence on Instagram of him ollieing up onto a pole, spinning around, and landing it, what you might know as a nada spin, but what's really interesting is that this is from 1988, a year before Nottis did it. Did Mike V invent the Nottis spin? Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, the channel where you can learn something new about skateboarding three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we take a look at something in the skateboarding world. It's been a while since I've done a Trick Histories video on my Know Your Tricks playlist, uh, but this just kind of came out in the news, so I thought I would talk about it. Um, the Nada Spin, obviously named after Nada Kalpas, he did it in 1989 in the video Streets of Fire. And he actually only did the trick once, which is kind of funny to think about because to a lot of people, that's his biggest legacy in skateboarding is the Nada Spin. But let's take a look at his story. This is from the Chrome Ball incident. He has an interview on there, and this is what he says. Yeah, I think that's the only time I ever wrote out of it. It's not that I didn't like it. It was honestly just a way to kill time. A friend of mine cut hair at his shop there, paper, rock, scissors. It's still there in Venice, right up from the pavilion. But to kill time while someone was getting their hair cut or whatever, we'd just spin around on that thing. Julian Stranger and Jesse Martinez would be there too. It was more just to see how many times you could spin around on it. It wasn't like a trick. When Scott Dietrich and his crew came up for Streets on Fire, they asked me about spinning around on the hydrant. I wasn't sure how they even heard about it, but I had to tell them that we hadn't yet figured out a way to roll away from it yet. But they wanted it, so I tried it. We burned a lot of film trying to figure out how to get off of it. You can see where I had to kind of grab the pole to slow myself down and gain a bit of leverage. That was the only way off of it. I didn't want to do any weird slow spins or something. I wanted it to be a nice flowing trick. I had no idea that it was going to be so big. I would have never guessed that one day it would be in a Tony Hawk's video game and all these guys would know me only from that one move. It's tough to nail down an actual date for when he did the trick, but it's pretty safe to say it was in 1989, pretty close to the release of the video because the turnaround time for videos back then was not as long. There was a lot of just cruising around having fun. It wasn't like pro skaters were logging footage for years getting ready for the next major video release. Um, Nottis' part in the last video, Wheels of Fire, was actually filmed in three days. So chances are this was done pretty close to the release date in 1989. So let's take a look at his actual trick a little bit closer. So he rolls up, he grabs the pole, spins around 720, then grabs and pulls himself back off. There's no question that this is a legitimate Nottis spin because it's literally the only one done by Nottis. So by definition, it's legitimate. Um, but grabbing onto something is kind of debatable these days whether you should do that or not. But it seems to me like there's basically two options. You can grab on and spin a lot, or you can do about 360 without grabbing. Um, it's kind of up to you to decide which one you like more. It's pretty tough to roll up to something, get a lot of spin, and then go crazy on top of it. Uh, Joe Moore did a 720, not a spin on a big ball, but that's a ball, and so he has a big surface area. He could land here, or he could land here, and it would all work. If you were to try to do that on a fire hydrant or something, it'd be really, really difficult, maybe even impossible to do a full 720 without grabbing on. So it's kind of up to you to decide whether you should or shouldn't grab when doing a not a spin, but I think it's safe to say both are legitimate methods to do the trick. So let's look at Mike's a little bit closer. This was published by Read and Destroy magazine in 1988. And I think it's important to note that that magazine is British. And so a lot of the pros over here in the States probably wouldn't have seen it. Um, and let's look at the story. This is from his caption on Instagram. June 1988. Soon after filming my public domain video part, I flew to Louisville, Kentucky for the NSA Bluegrass Aggression Session Contest in which I skated all three disciplines, freestyle, street, and vert. From there, I boarded a plane to the UK with Steve Caballero, Lance Mountain, and Tommy Guerrero for a Bones Brigade tour of the UK. This was my first time traveling overseas. I turned 18 in London. So just for some context, that date seems very solid. He knows exactly what was going on. He knows when his own birthday is. So I think we can pretty safely say this was actually June 1988. I remember getting out of a car at South Bank. There was electricity in the air. As soon as I put my board down, things just started happening. None of it was premeditated. I wasn't skating from a script. I was 100% in that moment. And I interacted with the environment with honesty and sincerity. Anything felt possible, and my skating unfolded in a completely spontaneous way. This was street skating. Total freedom of expression. 
I found that to be pretty interesting. So he doesn't claim that he invented anything. He's not saying that he did anything first, but if you read between the lines a little bit, he's skating without a script. He's interacting with the environment in a natural way. It kind of seems like he's saying that he came up with it on the spot. So to get some more clarity, I actually reached out to Mike and believe it or not, he answered. And this is what he said. I asked if this was the first ever not a spin. He said, I think so, does not compare. So not claiming anything. I think that was a pretty smart answer because if he were to come out and claim that he invented it, I think there would be a lot of backlash. People would think that he's trying to bury Nottis in history or he's trying to take credit for it and he's whatever. And I could only see what the comment section would look like after he said something like that. So even though he's not willing to try to take credit himself, I do think he deserves it, which is why I'm making this video. So, of course, he did his no-handed 360. Nottis did his grabbing with 720. Uh, which one is harder is not really the question. The point is that he spun around on the top of a pole and landed it, and that does seem like that's the legitimate definition of a Nottis spin. So I do think we can say that Mike was first. But the next question is, did Nottis steal the Nottis spin from Mike V? And I don't think there's any chance that that's true. Um, like I said, that magazine was British only, so Nottis probably didn't see it because not only did he not read international magazines, he barely even read ones from the U.S., I had seen skate magazines before, but I never actually owned them. I wasn't honestly huge into reading that stuff. A lot of it just didn't really translate to me. That was from his Chrome Ball Instant interview as well. And there's another story in there about how he learned the Frontside 360. And I think this says a lot about the way that he skated. So he had heard about Steve Caballero doing fakie 360 ollies on vert. He hadn't even seen it, but he decided to try to learn that off of a curb. So he's trying Caballero's off of a curb and he realizes for him, it's a little bit easier frontside. And then he realized it'd be easier to not be going fakie and blind into the spin. So he tried it forward. And so he heard about a fakie 360 and then invented frontside 360s um, just based off of that. So I think that says a lot about the way that he skates and the way that his mind worked and everything. And I have no doubt that he did invent the trick. He just wasn't necessarily the first to do it. Um, it just, there wasn't as much communication and shared footage and all that as there is today. But that's the main not a spin. What about the different variations you can do? Well, I know of two people who will do not a spins pretty regularly. There's Richie Jackson and Dan McFarlane. Dan is a friend of the show. He's helped out with research before. Um, he's been a pro skateboarder since the 90s. And he recently put out a video, uh, like a best of compilation of everything that he's done, like the best stuff that he's done since 1990. And I found that pretty interesting. He does a lot of not a spins in that. So... I decided to ask him what he knows about the history of the trick. And in 1992 is when he first started doing them. He does his backside. He says he was the first to do a backside no-handed and switch frontside. Um, there was a lot of different variations that he came up with, a lot of different combos and stuff. But it doesn't seem like there was a ton of movement on the Nada Spin until Tony Hawk's Underground 2 came out in 2004. At this point in the series, they were trying to cram in as many tricks as possible to give you a reason to buy the next version and they added in the not a spin. I remember at the time, a lot of people thought this was a fake trick, that no one could actually do it. And I can kind of see why. In the game, you can do it with a handstand, and you're doing like 100 spins, and then you pop the top off of the fire hydrant, and it shoots water, and all this kind of stuff. Like, it seemed like a ridiculous trick that no one had ever done, but that's why Corey Shepard's in 2005 was kind of a big deal. It's not the best looking one ever filmed, but it's interesting because a lot of kids at the time were totally blown away by this because they didn't know that you could actually do that. Some people thought that he stole that from the video game and all that kind of stuff, but him doing it seemed like it kind of opened the way for people to start doing not a spins again. And you start seeing new variations coming out a little bit after that. So Dan, who I mentioned before, in 2010, he did a switch not a spin, a switch no-handed front side not a spin, and he called it the Satan spin because it's Nottis going the other way. And he actually texted Nottis and asked him if it was okay to name it that, and he said it was cool. So that's what that one is. But Richie Jackson did a dark side Nottis where the board is the other way, and he named that the Satan Spin. So, I mean, I can kind of see how it would go either way, but Dan's was a little bit earlier. So those were some variations there. Dan also did a couple other ones first. He was the first to do a Nottis Spin into a manual. I saw this trick from someone else too, but I think Dan predates it by at least several years. He also did some Nada spins out of 50-50 grinds, came up with a couple different variations of that, and he did this really cool Nottis to shove it out as well. Another guy really pushing Nada spins, of course, is Richie Jackson, and in 2005, he did this Nada shove it. 
I guess that's what you would call it. He's not really doing a not a spin because his body isn't spinning, but that's just kind of the best we have for names at this point. So he did that. One of his other big contributions to the not a spin is the nose not a, which looks like this. It opens up some new possibilities with the trick. Dan took that trick and did it nose in detail, and Richie later did a couple of different variations of that too. Richie also did a kickflip into a dark nodis, and he did what he calls a ghost nodis, where the board starts spinning and then he jumps off and it spins without him. He's also come up with some other really cool variations, but he's not the only one. Here's Jordan Sanchez, who is somehow managing a kickflip out of a nodis spin, and then there's David Gravette, who does a pole jam into a nodis, and then a pole jam back out of it somehow, which is also really cool. So that's what I know about the Nada Spin. If I've missed any major moments in Nada Spin history, put those in the comments below. But until next time, here are some more videos you might want to check out. I do have a whole playlist of these Know Your Tricks videos. I just haven't done them in a while. So check those out here and make sure you subscribe to keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.